Hello everyone. As you know, Apache Cassandra community is working on a release for 5.0 by end of this year. On September 4th, Cassandra 5.0 Alpha 1 version was released. I am very excited about this release and want to discuss about the changes being introduced with 5.0. In this session, let's take a look at Cassandra.yaml file from 5.0 version. Let's compare it with the 4.1.3 version and see what has changed. As you can see here, on the left side, I have Cassandra.yaml file from version 4.1.3 and on my right, I have Cassandra.yaml from version 5.0 alpha 1. Let's go ahead and scroll through the file to see what differences are there between the 4.13 and 5.0 version of Cassandra.yaml file. This is just a URL change. We don't have to discuss about this. There are no new changes to vNodes or the token settings. There is a new parameter being introduced to handle the transfer of hints during node decommissioning. During decommission of existing nodes in a cluster, hints are still being collected and transfer to the other nodes. So this parameter here called transfer hints on decommission can be enabled or disabled. By default, it will transfer the hints. So default value is true. This is a new parameter being introduced with Cassandra 5.0. As we all know, Cassandra is developed in Java and when it is running, it is running in JVM. When there are unhandled exceptions in the Java code, we have a process called heap dump. So there is a new parameter being introduced to specify where this heap dump file should be created. By default, when these unhandled exceptions occur inside the Java code, the heap dump is not captured. So here is a parameter to enable to dump the heap on uncaught exceptions. By default, this value is false. In all the versions before Cassandra 5.0, the authenticator value can be set to allow all authenticator or a password authenticator. In the previous versions, it was a very simple key value pair setting. With Cassandra 5.0, this authenticator has been extended as a class. So starting in Cassandra 5.0, authenticator setting is no longer a simple key value pair. As you can see here, we still can use allow all authenticator and password authenticator, but it has to be specified in the form of a class name. Also, there is a new authenticator being introduced, which can be based on certificate authentication. This new authenticator is called mutual TLS authenticator. This kind of authentication will be based on certificates. In Cassandra 5.0, for authentication and authorization, there is a new restriction being introduced. We can now restrict users based on CIDR ranges. So I'm hoping we can control specific users coming from a specific network, IP range, or a CIDR to allow them to connect or reject them to connect from our Cassandra clusters. This new CIDR based authorization has two settings, allow all CIDR authorizer 
or Cassandra CIDR authorizer. By default, there are no restrictions enabled, meaning all users from all CIDRs can connect to Cassandra clusters. To support this, there is a new table being introduced into system auth key space. CIDR underscore permissions table will store all the permissions related to this restriction. There are few new options being introduced with create role for controlling the CIDR related restrictions. There are no new changes being introduced for data file directories. This difference is just a white space at the end of the line. CDC or change data capture was introduced in the previous versions. As we know, when we enable CDC, it will start capturing all the changes onto the file system directory where it was configured in the config file. There is a config parameter to specify how much of CDC data will be held on the file system. Once it reaches this limit, CDC will stop accepting new transactions. That means node will not allow any more transactions to happen until the CDC files are consumed or deleted. There is a new parameter being introduced called CDC block rights. By default, this setting is set to true. This parameter will control the behavior of CDC when it reaches to the max limit specified on the file system. When CDC block rights is disabled or set to false, the CDC enabled tables will not block the rights. What it actually does is it deletes the old CDC data from disk and then continues to write new data just to keep the file system size in control. Also, there is a new parameter being introduced called CDC on repair enabled or disabled. This is mostly related to how CDC mutations are replayed through the right path on streaming, for example, during repairs. With Cassandra 5.0, there is a new SS table format being introduced. We will discuss about this new format little later. These new comments are being added relating to the new SS table format. Back in January 2023, I was reading through the Cassandra YAML file for version 4.1. I found a very small spelling mistake in one of the comments here. I immediately opened a Jira and got it fixed. As I mentioned many times in the past, when you are in the open source community, if you see something, even if it is such a small thing like spelling mistake, it is better to get involved create a Jira ticket and somebody from the community will work and get it fixed. You are part of the open source community now. Please be involved even if it is a small change. When a new version of software is released, it is very important to identify the deprecated parameters or any parameters which were removed from the config files. Here is one of those deprecated or removed parameters in Cassandra 5.0. In the previous versions, we used to have a parameter called commit log sync batch window in milliseconds. In Cassandra 5.0, this parameter is now deprecated and removed from the config file. As you can see here, in Cassandra 5.0, there is a new config value being introduced called 
resolve multiple IP addresses per DNS record. It is possible to have multiple IP addresses assigned to a specific host. So this config setting will help us deal with multiple IP addresses for assigned to each host. By default, it is set to false. All the settings related to internode authenticator are by default commented out. But one big change from the previous versions before Cassandra 5.0 is internode authenticator setting was a key value pair. But it is no longer a key value pair in the Cassandra 5.0 onwards. Internode authenticator has been changed to a class name method so that it can be extended to allow multiple class values assigned to internode authenticator. Along with this change, I also noticed that there is a new authenticator available for internode connections based on certificates. This is called Mutual TLS Internode Authenticator. There are no changes introduced for incremental backups. In Cassandra 5.0, this config file was updated to add more comments on this incremental backups parameter. In previous versions before Cassandra 5.0, the SS table format we were using is called BIG. With Cassandra 5.0, there is a new SS table format which is being introduced and the new one is called BTI. This new SS table format is also called as tri-indexed BTI format. By default, in Cassandra 5.0, SS table format will continue to be big unless we set this parameters and change them to use BTI format. As we just now discussed about the new SS table format called BTI, uh, there is lot of uh, comments about the new format. There is one big difference for the column index size setting. Um, since the size for big SS table format and the size required for BTI is different, this particular column index size parameter is by default commented out in Cassandra 5.0. We have to explicitly enable and set column index size based on if we are trying to use the big SS table format or the new BTI format, we have to accordingly change the value for column index size. In the previous versions before Cassandra 5.0, we had three types of compaction available. Size tiered compaction strategy, time window compaction strategy, leveled compaction strategy. With Cassandra 5.0, there is a new compaction strategy being introduced. The new one is called unified compaction strategy. So the hope is basically this will become an automatic compaction strategy selection and it will combine both size tiered compaction strategy and the time window compaction strategy. So users don't need to select the strategy for their tables. As you can see here, the new default compaction strategy, unified compaction strategy setting is commented out. So we have to explicitly go and enable the default compaction as unified compaction strategy whenever we are ready to use the new compaction strategy.
For a long time, we had a standard set of snitches available in the config files. With Cassandra 5.0, now we see the new cloud snitches are available. Some of them are Alibaba Cloud Snitch, Cloud Stack Snitch, and Google Cloud Snitch. There are some new entries to configure Java Crypto Provider. Looks like these entries are more for Amazon Web Services. Notice that the key store password and trust store password are not very secure. It's basically set to Cassandra. In the previous versions before Cassandra 5.0, these parameters were by default not commented out. In 5.0, these parameters are commented out, forcing the operator to change the password if they're enabling these passwords. Also, there are some new options being introduced for internode encryption using certificates. As you can see here, key store password is again commented out under client encryption options. For client encryption options, I also see there is a new parameter being introduced called require endpoint verification. Recently, a serious vulnerability was discovered in the previous versions of Cassandra where a malicious attacker can use user-defined functions to run unwanted code on the cluster. So, we were forced to disable this option called scripted user defined functions enabled. We forced it to set to false. But now with Cassandra 5.0, the scripted user defined functions option is completely removed from the config files. I am sure you heard about the storage attached indexes. This is a new feature which came out of the Cassandra enhancement proposal number 7, also known as CEP7. Storage attached indexing is a wonderful option and it opens up new use cases. The entire vector search is developed based on SAI. So remember that storage attached index is completely different from the experimental feature we used to have in the previous versions called SASI, SASI indexes. Some of these threshold related parameters are replaced with guardrails relating to partition sizes in Cassandra 5.0. This is just additional comments added to the config file. As mentioned earlier, some of these threshold related parameters are now moved into guardrail section in Cassandra 5.0. Dynamic data masking is a new feature being introduced to Cassandra 5.0. This is a wonderful option where we can create the tables with some columns being masked by default and it requires special permissions granted to the users who can see the unmasked data. By default, dynamic data masking is disabled. These are the new guardrails being introduced for minimum timestamp and maximum timestamp thresholds. 
This is the new guardrail being introduced to allow drop key space or disallow the drop key space commands. These are the new guardrails being introduced for partition size threshold, partition tombstones thresholds, column value size thresholds. This allow filtering related guardrail was already existing before Cassandra 5.0. But what I see new thing on this particular config file in Cassandra 5.0, there is more warning messages for the operator to inform about allow filtering uh, damage it can cause. This is the new guardrail to allow or disallow creating new key spaces with simple strategy. These are the new guardrails for vector dimension related thresholds. Now with Cassandra 5.0, we have a new guardrail to protect Agnest running alter command on the existing tables. These are the new guardrail settings for maximum replication factor threshold. These are new guardrails being introduced for time to live related settings. These are the new guardrails for default secondary index related settings. We can by default enable SAI using this option here called default secondary index, we have to set it to storage attached. This is the new parameter being introduced with Cassandra 5.0. This default setting of Cassandra underscore 4 will ensure that all the features are still compatible with the older versions of Cassandra and this can be used for upgrading your Cassandra clusters from 4.0 to the newer versions 5.0 and above. When this value is set to Cassandra underscore 4, it will maintain all the compatibility with the previous versions. If we change this setting during upgrade, and we have to make this parameter value as upgrading, then it will make sure all the new features enabled safely on the cluster while maintaining the backward compatibility. After the migration or upgrade is complete, uh, we completely change the entire cluster into Cassandra 5.0. We can set this value to none, which makes the backward compatibility uh, no longer exist, meaning the new cluster will continue to run with all new features enabled and it will no longer be compatible with the older versions of Cassandra. For now, this is the last parameter in the Cassandra YAML file for version 5.0 alpha 1. Hope you enjoyed the walkthrough of the Cassandra YAML file and we'll start talking about Cassandra 5 soon by installing it and testing it.